Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We're so grateful to be here on this Thy Holy Sabbath day. We pray for, uh, for words of wisdom, for your, uh, for your testimony to be sure, uh, that people would understand the great power, the miraculous power that you have to change lives and to make us new creatures and the continual process of uh, becoming a new creature. Uh, so may you be glorified in the words that are spoken and may self be hid behind the cross of Calvary and that Jesus may be uplifted, that all may see thy great plan of salvation and thy wonderful love. And we thank thee, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, for those that don't know me, and I'm not sure uh, if uh, Brother uh, Jan has heard my testimony. It may have been a long time ago, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to share with you the great power of a marvelous God who, uh, whose arm is not slack and who is willing to save to the uttermost. Uh, so I'll begin with uh, sharing a little bit, well, sharing about myself, because this is a testimony. I grew up uh, in New Jersey. Uh, uh, I was born on May 8th, 1975 to my parents, uh, Michael and Mady, and they are, uh, we're, we're, we're in a Christian family, we're actually uh, Jewish, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Jewish <coughs> of origins, uh, Ukrainian, uh, Latvian, a few other countries mixed in there, Austrian and uh, Scottish or different things. And we, I grew up in a very secular uh, home, uh, absent of all religion, really, uh, Jewish by race, I say, but not by faith. Um, I, I didn't even know about the Sabbath growing up as a, as a Jew. That's how secular we were. Uh, <clears throat> we, uh, I, my dad was a carpenter. My mom, uh, she was an office manager. But my mom has a little, uh, had a little darker past. She's also into uh, uh, psychic uh, uh, communication. So she uh, held necromancy and different things. Uh, that were that are obviously abhorrent to God and and we were uh, so but I grew up in a you know your average house where in in the states where sports was everything for me uh, and my life was a continual uh, uh, ritual you'd say right the ritual of uh, every Sunday you had baseball you know like the weekend was going watching sports and and uh, during the week, you're watching sports and going to school and just you get totally disconnected with uh, with anything relating to God. And so you become uh, habitual in your life, as you know, uh, summer comes around. You have <clears throat> in, in the U.S., you have uh, in the fall, you have uh, the World Series football star. It's amazing how Satan works like that. He just gets you so comfortable in his rituals. His rituals of of sports, his rituals of of Hollywood, and up oh, Memorial Day weekends coming along, the the new movies coming out for the year, or Labor Day, you know, he just gets you so used to just the status quo of of his world. And so, as I grew up, I was uh, addicted to sports. I was uh, addicted to uh, you know Hollywood and TV and. <clears throat> And I, uh, I, to me, you know, <laughs> looking back, I didn't stand much of a chance uh, to uh, to be saved. Looking back, it's it's truly a miracle that the Lord would uh, come to me because I was so I was so lost. Although I was so comfortable in my in my lostness, I guess you'd say, because I was just ritualistic in my in my upbringing. And uh, and having the dark oppressiveness of having witchcraft in the home, uh, you know, was uh, blinding every avenue uh, that God was, uh, you know, trying to reach me in. Uh, he, God, did use different souls to just drop seeds in my life when I was growing up as a as a young boy and as a, a young uh, a young man. There was opportunities. We had a Bible in the house uh in the in the attic it had uh, lots of dust on it but i found it one day and i asked uh my parents what it was and i just i started reading a little bit uh, i didn't understand it but you know it was a seed that was that was sown um 
And in my eyes, <clears throat> you know, my view of Christianity was shaped by Hollywood, really. Like, you know, you saw, I saw the Protestant religion as for the rich. And then I saw Catholicism as for the poor, you know, taking your poor, your suffering, uh, just from Hollywood, you know, you see the church is always open and people going to pray and uh, uh, things like that, just from Hollywood. And I didn't really fit into any of that, uh, those kind of stereotypes that Hollywood put forth. And, uh, and I saw Catholicism as, uh, as kind of morbid and just like you see uh, Jesus on the cross and, you know, just seems like it, it was just uh, not very appetizing to me, you know, to want to uh, be part of that uh, religion. Um, so my religion was myself. I worship self. I worship uh, movie stars, athletes, you know, uh, superstars and athletes. And, you know, you see the stars falling from heaven. You see how, uh, you know, Satan uses that uh, aspect. When I grew up, I just wanted to be, I wanted to be a baseball player, professional baseball player. And when I saw my, uh, you know, my dreams of that being uh, not fulfilled, not easily fulfilled, I started getting into drugs and alcohol, uh, you know, God, you know, you, Satan just lets you down more and he just drives you into another, another addiction. So got into uh, uh, alcohol pretty young, you know, like 13 or so and started smoking and drinking and just going down that perpetual uh, cycle as well. You know, the, uh, the God of this world has blinded our eyes, uh, but we read in uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, that uh, he, the Lord says that we overcome by uh, the blood of the lamb and by our testimony. <clears throat> and it's by the testimony that we can help others and, and share with others that uh, God is able to save, that we are kind of all in the same boat, uh, though some people just get to the destination uh, in a little different way. Um, and so as I grew up, um, my, uh, my love for things, you know, for mm -hmm. things of this world just grew. I started getting into uh, gambling, got into addictions. And I've, I guess that you'd say I'd have an addictive personality because uh, I would get addicted to gambling, addicted to this, addicted to that. And so I, I found myself uh, losing all my money. I found myself, uh, you know, because I, I went to Arizona State University uh, and I would go to Las Vegas and I'd go and I'd get involved with bookies as well and sports gambling and things like that and alcohol. Uh, you know, I would, I went to Vegas once and I, I, blacked out I must have blacked out in the elevator I was drinking so much and and I don't know how I got back to the hotel room but I got back to the hotel room it, it, it was a mirror I don't know how it happened but uh you know and you, yeah just I found myself just uh in a phony world with phony friends you know and just it was uh it was very uh it was very disconcerting and then you know, with the addiction, also pornography and addictions to this, you know, you find yourself uh, hopeless and, and all this while, uh, you know, having that, because I live with my parents for, for a while, even after, uh, you know, even after college, after, well, during college I did. So I had uh, this just demonic uh, oppression, darkness that would be over me. Uh, and then but uh, you know God is good. He he uh, he came to me in in different in different ways, uh, different friends dropping different seeds, and uh, when I was uh, when I was in uh, I worked at a uh, I was in sales for the most part of my uh, young adult life from you know tw my early twenties into my uh, approaching thirty, and I ended up. Uh, us uh, um, going to work at a at a uh, natural uh, not a natural remedy street uh, uh, treatment center for young uh, young addicted boys to drugs to help them to uh, uh, you know find a better way although I didn't know the better way that was it was Jesus but they use more therapy and things like that and so I 
I, I went that way and it pretty much changed my life. I, I knew I was getting, uh, I was looking back, I was coming back to where God would have me to be because he put it in my heart to, uh, to get out of the sales, out of the, out of the money running, you know, running after money and things like that. And he put it in my heart to help, you know, to want to help, to, to look to help people. So I got out of the sales aspect of my life and I ended up uh, getting into this, uh, helping these young, these young boys, you know, men, young boys, adolescents, 13 to 18 years old who had drug addictions. And so I saw, uh, I met somebody, uh, he was a nurse, he was a Christian. He, he, uh, you know, he, he kind of helped me. He was into raw food and he, I, I saw in, uh, in health that I can, I think I, I can be happier through health. Uh, and even before that I was doing, uh, acting, I was, I was doing, um, extra work on movie sets and things like that, trying to get into the acting field. And I met a Muslim gentleman who was, uh, he was chewing on a piece of licorice root. I didn't know what he was doing. And I asked him, what, what are you doing? What are you chewing on? And he said, oh, licorice root. And anyway, anyway, we ended up talking and on, on the set of the movie. And, and then uh, he invited me over to his house and, and he showed me different natural remedies and things that would uh, help in our health. And I was just like, oh, okay, interesting. And, and he said, have you ever thought about becoming vegetarian at all? And I said, no, not really, but I never really liked meat anyway. So I was just I was like, well, maybe I'll give it a shot sometime. And so uh, I think a couple weeks or a week later, my mom went, made like a baked chicken and it had a feather like sticking out of it, like a, one of those hairs that was like this long or so sticking out of it. And I just said, that's it. I, I'm never eating meat again. So, and, uh, so from that time, and that was in uh, 1990, uh, I think it was like 1996. From that point forward, I never ate uh, chicken or meat again. I was still eating fish, but I never ate uh, any meat from that point forward. Uh, so I praise the Lord for that. But that was be that was before I was a Christian. I just saw it was more for uh, health reasons, for uh, more like uh, for the you know treating the animals well. And so anyway, so I started my health. Uh, reform at, a, at an early age. I think I was about 20 years old and, and it was progressive. I was still eating cheese and, and, and milk and things like that. And so this nurse coming back to this nurse, he showed me a better way to get off of dairy totally. And to, you know, told me about the mucus that, you know, forms from all the dairy. And, and he, he gave me some books to read uh, from an author, uh, forget his name but he lived to like he was 104 or something and he was raw and uh, Norman Walker that's right Norman Walker and so I'm like oh I want to live forever you know it's interesting how uh, God puts it in us we don't want to die who wants to die right God put it in us because we want to live forever we want to uh, um, you know we weren't meant to die and God put that in us to not not have that uh, and so I was studying this health. I'm like, oh, I want to live as long as I can and, and be healthier and, and things like that. So I was just like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give up uh, dairy and all that other stuff as well. I will eat raw. I was ju juicing. I was, and, uh, and then, you know, God put it in my heart also. He, he's like, get out of this, get out of this concrete jungle. You're living in Phoenix, Arizona. It's hot, you know asphalt everywhere, concrete everywhere. You need to come back to, to me, right? And uh, I didn't know it was him talking to me, but so I talked to my nurse friend and he's all like, oh, have you thought about moving to Hawaii? I said, nah, Hawaii is too expensive, way too expensive. But he's like, oh, here's a book. It's called Affordable Living in uh, on the Big Island of Hawaii. So I was just like, oh, I started reading it and I'm like, oh, maybe I can do this. Maybe I can I can uh, uh, get out of here and go somewhere tropical and beautiful and, and live minimally. You know, he, God was putting in my heart to, to drop all these things, drop all the money, live minimally. You'll be happier to live more of a minimalistic uh, way. And so he, uh, he really uh, 
sparked my interest in moving to Hawaii. I ended up visiting with the, I met my one of my ex-girlfriends uh, and uh, in Hawaii, we spent two weeks there and I was just exploring the island. I ended up, that was in February, I ended up moving to the big island on June 1st of uh, 2000, 2005. Uh, so in 2005, I ended up uh, uh, moving to the, the big island of Hawaii. You know, and another thing, you know, uh, when 9-11 happened, 2001, uh, that, that made a big impact in my life, too. And I remember one of my friends called me up. He was a Christian. He's like, oh, this is it. This is the end of the world. This is, uh, you know, uh, Jesus is coming and, you know, Armageddon's going to happen and all these things. And and so I was I was like, what are you talking about? You know, I wasn't even I didn't know anything about uh, the coming of Christ or Christianity at all and uh the end of the world either so that 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 kind of startled me a little um that was in 2001 and then in 2005 just four four years later i ended up moving to the big island of hawaii and i uh was really basking in the in the uh in the beauty of nature and and i worked at a uh <coughs> excuse me i worked at a uh natural remedy uh, for cancer, a Gerson therapy. I'm not sure if anybody's heard of it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I was working in the kitchen. I was doing the juicing. I was making the food. And uh, before that, I was working at a, uh, at a new age bed and breakfast called the Dragonfly uh, Inn or something, Dragonfly something or other. And I was eating raw food and things, you know, you, I, I was getting into numerology and more, you know, I was searching for something. I was searching for something to fill, uh, fill the void. I, before that, I was into uh, Buddhism and trying to empty myself and, you know, try and just trying to find something to uh, make, make my spiritual life better and, and to improve my physical life and get out of the drugs and alcohol and things like that. So with that uh, being said, I, I, so I ended up uh, getting these jobs. I left the the Dragonfly Inn, the New Age spiritual. I mean, they were talking to dolphins and things like. This is how crazy they, <laughs> you know, they were. They were trying to communicate with dolphins and you know just bizarre things, uh, which you know I was I thought it was kind of strange. But uh, so I ended up going to work for this other uh, lady, uh, and she was French, and she had this uh, clinic. And the Gerson therapy clinic there in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, I was still eating raw. I was still, uh, doing my best, right. To be healthy. And I asked her, is there a, uh, a, a naturopathic doctor that would help me with some things and a, a male. And she knew of somebody, his name was Doug Ford. And so I ended up, uh, uh going to this, uh, this doctor, doc, uh, naturopathic doctor Ford and doing some treatments, uh, helping to cleanse and to detox. And he happened to be a Christian. And this was uh, a turning. Uh, I, I, it was a turning point because he was a Christian and he started talking about uh, the, the war going on in Iraq and different pro prophecy things. And like I said, I never, uh, never thought about never thought about uh, prophecy or anything like that. Cause I, like I said, I, we were a uh, secular home and I grew up very uh, secular and got into new age and all these other things. But anyway, I would listen. And then uh, a couple, I went there several times. And one of the times he said, uh, would you be interested in reading the Bible? I said, wow, you know, never thought about that, but I guess I I'll give it a try. Uh, I'll try. I don't, you know, I was searching for something. I'm like, okay, what do you recommend? I, it was a big book and I didn't, I didn't uh, know where to start. And he put it, uh, uh, okay, thanks, Marilyn. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So new age is basically, uh, consulting with the spiritual, uh, spirituality, uh, outside of uh, Christ. So it, anything outside of Christ generally has to do with, uh, demonic activity, so you're dealing with uh, like new age would be uh, like my, my mom was psychic, right? So that would be new age. It would, it would be like uh, d diving into the unknown realm. I think, you know, that that's pretty, uh, uh, 
uh, relevant, like in, when you're describing uh, New Age, is like an unknown realm, a spirituality, a, a godly, like to become like God uh, in this unknown realm. Uh, and so there's a lot of uh, different aspects of it uh, from car tarot cards to numerology to uh just finding out uh about yourself through outside forces instead of uh instead of through examining yourself through god's word so i don't know if that helps a little bit but so i got into uh uh so i was into that and then he okay great thanks marilyn uh <clears throat> So, yeah, so there's a lot of different aspects of New Age, like uh, self-help books and different things that uh, you can get involved in. And, and uh, yeah, it's taking on a whole new, uh, <coughs> whole new, like, realm, you know, ideas. Like, and uh, so I was back to, okay, Doug. So I went to, so he gave me the Bible. So I, he said, read the Gospel of John. And so, yeah. I started reading the Gospel of John and the Gospel of John uh, really, yeah, it was a turning point. It was the, it was the, uh, how would you say the apex of kind of the conversion experience. Although God was working through me uh, in the, uh, in the end, in the beginning from step by step. And I remember when I was going to Hawaii uh, this is an important aspect too that kind of led me even closer. This was in June, when my uh, my father dropped me off at the airport for to go to Hawaii, and my dad said something that uh, I'll never forget. He said, "Morgan, you know you're selfish," and uh, and that really pricked my heart because my dad, you know, he never talked about things like that. He was very reserved, not emotional. He was a carpenter. He, you know, kept to himself. And uh, so that, that really changed my life when my, I can see my mom saying that, you know, but when my dad said it, uh, it really uh, sent shockwaves into my, into my brain, into my heart. And so it was a long flight out to say the least to Hawaii. It was five hour flight. And uh, I was thinking a lot about that. Uh, those that comment and so i got to hawaii and i started a journal uh how to be i, I wanted to be less selfish you know i, I didn't want to be selfish i didn't want to have my father looking down upon me uh in that in that way and i'm like is it you know it's true you know i need to anyway so i kept start keeping a journal and i never did that before either and and so that was the first time and then, uh, and then I met Doug Ford and he gave me the Bible. And so I started reading the Bible and I was like, wow, you know, never man spake like this man. This is, this is amazing. You know, the words of the Bible and the words of Jesus are, it was, it was a whole new, whole new uh, thought process that went through my mind. And when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, I was just like, I don't want this to happen. I don't want to read anymore. I didn't want it to happen. Because it was my sins that were putting Jesus upon the cross. It was my selfishness. It was my uh, all my addictions, all the things that separated me uh, from my God. And so, uh, yeah, it was a major, uh, major, <laughs> major big deal because you know I came to I came to Jesus, and so I, here's the thing: I I was sitting in my room at the natural remedy uh, place because I, I stayed there as well. And I was, I was sitting there contemplating Jesus and he, he was in my heart. It was like a, a warm blanket, just wrapped my heart. Like, I was like, what is this? You know, I never felt this before. All the depression, all the anxiety and all these things just kind of just shed. And I was just like, wow, this is, this must be the born again experience. And so at that point I ran out of my room and I said, to the, the French lady and to the Polish guy that worked there. His name uh, was uh, Andy or something. I forget his name. <clears throat> I said, I found Jesus. I found Jesus. And, like, and, and the doctor said, oh, those things always happen here. You know, spiritual awakenings. And they, no, I've said, I found Jesus. And so I ended up going back to Doug. I brought my Bible. I said, thank you so much, Doug, for for your encouragement and your, and your uh, mentoring to bring me to Christ. And here's the Bible. He's like, oh no, you keep it. 
you keep it. And then, uh, and then I said, well, now what do I do? And he gave me uh, a business card of the church. It was New Hope Christian Fellowship in Hilo, Hawaii. And it was, I was like, I'm never going to go into a church. I thought I would never go into a church. <laughs> the only time I was in a church was for weddings. My, my, my cousin got married in a Catholic church and uh, my friend, uh, I think my friend, Steve, he got married in the Catholic church. You know, that was it. That was the only time my brother, he got married in a like civil, civil union. I'm not sure if he got married and maybe he did get married in a church. But anyway, that was all for weddings. Uh, and I'm like, wow, church. I don't know if I want to do that. So, but I was like, I was so on fire that I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try. And I went there just wanting to help, wanting to, you know, learn and soak in everything. And I was just like, Lord, fill me. Uh, I, I just want to know truth. I, I've been without you all my life up until 30 years old. I lived the way of the prodigal son optimally. I did it perfectly. Just all the addictions, all the things that would separate uh, someone from God. And, and now I, I'm going to, I just want to know truth. I've been deceived uh and i i want to know truth that's that was it and i want to be like jesus i just wanted to, to i saw him and i just wanted to be like him so so i excuse me uh so i moved to uh hawaii on june 1st and i came to the i came to jesus september of 2005 so it was very short time four months or so three or four months that i i went from being uh, a selfish, uh, addictive, just, yeah, uh, wretch. And I came, I came, uh, I became a servant of the Lord. And so I was going to this church, the New Hope Christian Fellowship. It must have had like 1,500 people, big church, you know, big uh, mega church kind of place. And I wanted to serve. I came in and it was just so happened that week that they were having a, a men's retreat that we, the next weekend or two weekends from then. And I said, well, I don't have any money for the retreat. And they're like, oh, we'll pay for it. We'll, we'll help you out uh, for this retreat. And so I, uh, I uh, ended up going to this retreat and they slayed me in the spirit. I didn't know what it was, but I was just watching everyone else fall down and everything and got, I never got in <laughs> really into it, but I didn't know what it was, but I, bet, I said, well, I better do it because if all these other people are doing it, and that's just kind of the sheep mentality, right? You're like, well, I better go along with it. And, and so I um, got slain in the spirit and, and uh, just, but it, it was, a, it was, you know, it started making friendships and uh, with Hawaiians and it was really, uh, yes, it is another form of the new age is kind of slain in the spirit. Um, starting, and the, the church is kind of Pentecostal and its leanings. It wasn't very Pentecostal in his teachings, but where it got really Pentecostal uh, and, and kind of new age was in the uh, small group meetings they would have. So we go to someone's house and they start speaking in tongues and, and gyrating on the floor and things like that. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it was kind of troublesome. I didn't really know what to think of it. And my friend Bill, uh, who I was living with uh, in his uh, apartment, uh, an apartment in the garage, uh, he was he was kind of troubled. He's like, this isn't from God. You know, we were we were in the kitchen talking and like this. He's like, but he was really impressed that it wasn't from God. And and so uh, uh, we started talking about those things. And and then uh, as I uh, was digging more deep into the church and wanted to help, they put me in the kitchen. And you know, I was vegetarian. I was raw and I was very healthy. And these Hawaiians, they were eating squid and pork and all these different things and i said well i don't eat these things you know but i'll help in the kitchen but i don't eat these things and and uh they said uh they start you know they make fun of you make fun of me and stuff uh, vegetarian what do you eat like uh you know rabbit food and things like that but you know i i didn't i didn't mind was, i knew it was healthier right and so i started doing that and uh then I ended up uh, starting to go to another church, a Calvary Baptist church. Uh, one of the guy, one of the leaders of the music, Wilder, he played guitar and he was going to the New Hope Church. And then he 
he convinced me to come and uh, go to the uh, Calvary church. So I was going to two churches. I was doing the morning service and the afternoon service. I was on fire. I just wanted to know more. I was by the pastors, <clears throat> you know, keep this in mind. 1500 members of this, of this church and the pastor would have Bible studies in the morning at Starbucks. And there would be maybe five or six young people that would be at these Bible studies. I'm like, where is everybody? You know, that nobody wants to study more. No one wants to, you know, uh, learn from the pastor and things like that. So I found that uh, kind of strange. And then, and then uh, I was talking with the music leader and I'm like, what's your favorite book? And this is the music leader of a 1500 member church. And I said, what's your favorite book in the Bible? He's like, oh, I don't read. I don't actually read the Bible. Cause then I, I don't really want to change, you know, <laughs> I'm like, really <laughs> this was this was very surprising to me and i was like i was just struck with awe like why you know what is it about people that don't want to change to be more like jesus and so uh, i started going to calvary church and i started hanging out with pastor ron and you know we had a really good relationship i you know we'd go out and and go to the uh i remember we went to the psychiatric ward and started singing christmas songs and things like that to the people and and uh, made friends with one of the guys there. I, I forgot his name, but he ended up getting out. And uh, his his wife had put him in the psychiatric ward, I guess. Uh, and uh, he ended up getting out. And we ended up, I ended up going over there and having Bible studies with him and things like that. And uh, he was in the, what's that one religion? Uh, it's like, a, like, has like Eastern, it's Christian, but it's got Eastern, uh, uh, flavors to it. Uh, um, anyways, anyway, it'll come back to me, I'm sure. But he was in, what is it? Orthodox? No, no, no. Russian. It was like Eastern, like, uh, like a Tibetan kind of flavor to a Christian. And I don't, I forget what the name of it is, but Baha'i? yeah, Baha'i, Baha'i. Yeah. yeah, Baha'i. Yeah. Yeah. Baha'i. He was in Baha'i. Uh, and uh, so anyway, we had, we had some really good studies, really good talks about things. And uh, so, yeah, so I was going to both churches and I was I was really, uh, really excited to be, uh, you know, learn from the pastor. They had a radio program where he put us on radio and and it was really neat. And this is the hardest part. When you come to the Sabbath truth, you know, you lose a lot of friends. You know, you lose a lot of people who. Uh, who you love, right? Because they just can't ha they just can't handle the truth. And this is what happened with me here is like I was going to Calvary Chapel Church. I was, you know, we were part of the youth movement there. It was a smaller church, only like 30, 30 people or so. And uh and so I I was working at a health food store in Hilo, right on the uh, right on the bayside. And I here's kind of my uh segue to the Sabbath, but I was working there. And I was sharing with people about how they don't want to go to hell and things like that and burning fire, you know, burning place. And, and, uh, and then all of a sudden this guy comes in named Leroy and he, uh, he started, he, he was a beekeeper and he shared with me, uh, well, he, he was dropping off his honey. I signed my name, Morgan Polsky. He's like, Oh, are you, are you Russian? I'm like, yeah. He's like, Oh, are you Russian Jew? I'm like, well, yeah, but I'm a Jew who found Jesus. And he say, oh, yeah, so am I. So he ended up, uh, it was around three o'clock in the afternoon. It was in January of 2006. And, and he said, well, do you have time for a Bible study? I said, well, I get off in a couple hours or an hour. It was close. Anyway, the time was close where I was getting off. He's like, okay, I'll go to, I'll go to the beach over there and I'll, I'll be back. And so he, we ended up they had a cafe at the health food store. So I ended up, uh, we ended up having a Bible study for uh, a couple hours or so. He started sharing with me about the Sabbath, about the state of the dead, about how Satan deceived the whole world and <clears throat> all these things, which uh, the, the biggest thing wasn't the Sabbath. It wasn't the state of the dead that, that really left me in shock, but how the whole world has been deceived by Satan. And that's one thing that really blew my mind. It's like, wow, you know, how does this happen? How does the whole world get deceived by Satan? And uh, so that, that left a, a big impression upon my, upon my mind. And so 
I started, he, he said, look at the Sabbath, look at the, you know, so I was like, okay, I'll study it. I'll study it. Definitely. And, uh, I brought it home to my friend, Bill. He's like, oh, I think I had some seventh day Adventists bring home over some literature. He started taking out signs in the times and things like that. He's like, yeah, the Sabbath is, is Saturday. I'm like, well, why do you go to church on Sunday? It's like, oh, I don't know. Just all my friends and everything, you know, it's just like, oh, well, I'm going to start keeping the Sabbath. And so I called Leroy up and he, you know, started helping me with objections and things like that and started walking me through the process. And yeah, so I was just really, uh, really uh, grateful for Leroy. And, and, and uh, so I ended up moving from uh, the apartment in the uh, garage, which was which was really nice. I moved to uh, Leroy's place, lived in a tent for six months. And, and uh, yeah, it was really a good experience. So I lived in the tent for six months and he taught me all these different things, taught me hymns and some hymns and it was a whole, whole new experience. Uh, but Leroy and I, we started uh, banging heads a little bit and the Lord showed me that I need to go back to the mainland or the main part of the United States as we call as Hawaiians call the mainland, we call it just, you know, go to the lower 48. And so I ended up going back because I have a, a message to share with my family. I have a message to share with my friends about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ coming into my life. And so from that point forward, that was, I, I kept my first Sabbath, uh, the last Sabbath of January of 2006. And so that was January of 2006. I kept my first Sabbath. Uh, I invited my dad out. This was a big step too. I invited my dad out to Hawaii. Uh, I shared with him the gospel because he had prostate cancer and, and uh, he hadn't had a vacation in a while. So I flew him out to Hawaii, uh, share with him the gospel, read under every tree possible that I could find about uh, from uh, you know, mango trees to coconut trees, just sharing with him uh, the book of John, the book of Matthew, you know, whatever I could to just share with him a little bit of the gospel because he was at that time he was you know, more open than my mom who was definitely had uh, major issues and who we I pray for every day. But uh, so I share with my dad and I told him when he goes home he's going to have battles to fight. You know, uh, and it really brought tears to my eyes as I went to the airport with him because I knew the battle if he if he really accepted Jesus in his life that the battle that would commence with my mom. Uh, but uh, he, unfortunately, he's never, uh, never committed to Jesus. And he's still, unfortunately, walking in the same way. And that was, uh, that was 2006. He's now 74 years old. So pray for my parents. They're old. They're, uh, it doesn't look good that, uh, that they'll come to Jesus, but you know, I continue to pray for him. But as the older you get, the more, and the more you're enveloped in your ways, it's harder to break off those ways. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's a desperate situation for them. So pray for them. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I came back, I share with <coughs> my friends who I grew up with, who I was close to. I share with my, uh, my brother, who's uh, also in the, in the world and away from Christ as well. So I called up all my, a lot of my ex-girlfriends and apologized for my behavior and and share with them how, you know, I, I'm a Christian now, and I, I apologize, I ask for forgiveness for uh, the way I treated you, and, um, you know, all the different things, trying to uh, make right the things that I had made wrong, uh, you know, we're to uh, confess our sins, uh, our, our issues with those that we hurt, and uh, so, yeah, so it was a healing process for myself, uh, still healing, as we all do, as we all have uh, those uh, hallway, uh, I guess the memories of sin in our in our lives that we need to uh, uh, you know bring the uh, healing uh, to our uh, hearts through Jesus. So, so 2006, I ended up going to uh, uh, I kind of make it a little faster, but I ended up going to uh, Harvest Time Books for a, a Cole Porter training. I was staying with my grandmother in Rhode Island. Uh, and I, I drove my Jeep 16 hours, not knowing a soul down at Harvest Time Books. This is my first experience uh, with like starting getting into organizations. Uh, and uh, I drove 16 hours and, and uh, I spent 
the first night uh, on my drive down, it was like nine degrees or something Fahrenheit. And it was in, it was so cold. I was sleeping in a sleeping bag and I was just freezing. I didn't have money. I was really, uh, didn't have a lot of money. And so uh, I tried to make the best of it, but I couldn't, I couldn't hold out. I had to go get a hotel room because I fell asleep. Okay. But then I had to go to the bathroom and then forget it. Once you get up, <laughs> it was so cold, frigid cold that I ended up having to go to a hotel room, shaking, driving. It was just, you know, very cold. So anyway, I went down to Harvest Time Books, met some really good people. Uh, my first Seventh Day Adventist <coughs> person was uh, Patrick Jones. Invited me over to his fam, his home. Stayed over in his home, sung hymns, using the piano. It was like a whole new experience for me coming out of uh, um, the the way I was raised, and even in my you know Christian walk, never. Never uh, had that kind of experience, and as a Seventh Day Adventist, they were very, uh, very kind and uh, and loving, and accepted me, and ended up getting me a job with another guy. And it was, yeah, it's amazing how the miracles just start opening up. But <clears throat> I worked for Times of Refreshing. It's a natural remedies uh, uh, res uh, facility in Georgia, and there was a brother. His name was Franz from New York. He, uh, he, he was living in, I think it was Brooklyn. Anyway, he came down to help out at the, uh, uh, at times of refreshing. And we ended up just opening up the Bible and he was sharing with me some things about, uh, about Jesus and his nature about, cause I, you know, he's asked me, what do you think about Jesus? Is he God? And I'm like, well, yeah, of course he's God. Cause the Bible says my Lord and my God, right? So he's God. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm like, oh, okay, I don't quite understand, but I want to study more. I never believed in the Trinity because I was never taught it. I was pretty young in my Christian life when I became the seventh day of Venice and they didn't talk much about these things anyway. And, uh, in the, uh, in the churches, they were more just about love and everything, which is, you know, kind of typical for, uh, Protestant Christianity now, but so, uh, so he, we started opening up the Bible. We had another brother, Brody, come in and uh, he was studying with us. And you know, I was like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. You know, the father, the son, and I see, you know, the Holy Spirit is, the, you know, his spirit. And, and so I accepted that. And I didn't realize the, the snowball effect that this is going to take in my life. You know, I'm like, what's the resistance for? Why, why is, you know, what's the big deal? This was in 2008 when I, it was March of 2008, when I, when I learned about this, uh, father and son truth. So it's been, uh, how many years is that? That's, uh, 14, 14 years. <laughs> My wife's counting on her fingers. So 14 years, uh, of, uh, of being in this father and son truth. And I didn't realize when I first started in 2008, how, how big of a deal it was going to be. Cause it wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't huge back then. It was kind of like just, for me getting started and when I was talking to different people, they didn't really have an idea, but boy, it's been really agitated. Hasn't it brothers and sisters, like the whole, all the, all the uh, Sabbath school quarterlies have something. They just in Brazil here, they just changed the hymnal to uh, they changed the hymnal to different sections of, of the 28 fundamental beliefs. I don't know if they've done that all across the world or if it's just here in Brazil, but now it has to do with the 28 fundamental beliefs and the first 14 verses are titled to the Trinity, you know? Uh, and <laughs> I was like, wow, this is really, uh, this is really going, uh, really going far. Satan has no, no bounds. So anyway, I came to the uh, father and son truth in 2008. And I met uh, in 2000, I was just kind of feeling my way. I came across different ministries. I came across restitution ministries at the time when Natter and uh, was there and we became really close friends. Uh, we uh, ended up doing ministry work together in uh, at uh, Smyrna, where we went to uh, uh, Atlanta to the uh, uh, general conference. We were handing out literature and things like that, and uh, start getting involved with uh, Smyrna Gospel Ministries and uh, Seventh Day Home Church Fellowships, and all these ministries have really, you know, really shaped, helped shape my walk and. <clears throat> and brought me closer to, to Jesus, you know, closer to the truth. But uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of uh, division, you know, 
and I've seen it all. I've been involved with much of it, and uh, it's been uh, now it's been sad, but it's unfortunately the Bible says that you know heresies must come in that that those who are you know in the truth may be made mat- may be made manifest, and so I met. I came, uh, brother Andy Whitehurst. Uh, I came, I met him through Kelly Buttram, uh, who this was back in 2009 and Andy Whitehurst, uh, uh, sh- you know, I ended up becoming close with him building houses together, his brother's house and went to Georgia and did some work. And, uh, so brother Andy and I have, uh, known each other for 13 years now. And, uh, and then I met, uh, uh brother Vasco in, uh, Canada uh, Brother Vasco and I, I share with him the Father and Son truth at the Seventh-day Adventist Church in uh, uh, Ottawa. Yeah, Ottawa. And so I was one of the instruments, not the only instrument, but God uses many. Uh, and so I share with him uh, the Father and Son truth. And uh, we had it was just a great experience. The testimony was great, but uh, how his wife, how uh, Navina tried hiding the email that uh, I sent to him about the father and son and everything. And, and uh, anyway, it was really, uh, really amazing how God works. But uh, so, so that was back in 2015, uh, uh, 16, that I met uh, Brother Vasco. And, uh, and brother Jason as well, Jason Hernberg, I know him, uh, visited his house. And so anyway, the relationships have grown. Some relationships have grown closer. Other relationships have uh, grown uh, colder, unfortunately, because of uh, doctrinal issues and teaching errors and things like that. And it's, uh, it's difficult, but we, we pray that the Lord will bring everybody uh, together at some point to put away our differences. But uh, we know that um, many are called, but few choose. So uh, we uh, we are in this uh, we're in this world to save souls with uh, the mighty cleaver of truth. And so let us uh, you know we need to have truth on our lips and truth in our hearts. And uh, again, Jesus must be uh, made manifest. Uh, and I met my wife and oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I forgot. My wife told me, you know, about Santa Claus. I, I believed in Christmas. I remember, you know, the first time that I found out that Santa Claus didn't exist, I started crying. And, and <clears throat> it's amazing how, how, uh, the lies just perpetuate, you know, in Satan's kingdom here, you know, and, and so, uh, all the different holidays and everything and the paganism and every, you know, you just, it makes you it makes you wonder how anyone, how anyone's going to be saved right <laughs> through all the, the the lies and whatnot. But I met my wife in 2015 in September and September 2015 after I got back from uh, my missionary trips. I've been all over. I've been to Norway. Met brother uh, brother John there and uh, met um, uh, Catherine. I don't know if she's on or not, but uh, met Catherine there and uh, uh, Sister Eva, you came in after. I, I don't think were you in the Norway church when I was there. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, so we we're all one big web here. I've been to Italy twice and Serbia and Romania and France and Germany and. Uh, doing missionary work all across the world, the Philippines, uh, Australia, Fiji, Brazil, uh, here in Brazil, as well as um, in 2013 and 2014, I spent five and a half months here in Brazil. <coughs> and uh, so, yeah, the Lord's opened up many doors for me to travel the world. And I'm so grateful for that because uh, I don't think I would have been able to do it otherwise. Uh, so the Lord is good. And um and so, yeah, I met my wife in 2016, 15, and we got married in April of 2016. Now we have two, uh, two children, uh, Elliot and Mishael. Uh, two, our two sons are five and a half and, and two. Uh, Misha just turned two. So, um, and yeah, I met my wife on a Seventh-day Adventist website. And I was like thinking, I was in Wyoming at the time. I said, I'll never find, I'll never find a Godhead believer 
uh, Truth About the Father and Son on this Seventh Day Adventist website. I said, I'll give it a month. We'll see how it goes. I think a week into it or so, I, I met my wife. She's and she's Brazilian, so uh, it was interesting that. And she had similar friends because I did some research on her on Facebook just to look her up. <coughs> and uh, she had similar friends as I did, although they were they were feast keepers. And uh, they, I'm like, maybe she doesn't believe in the Trinity. Let me, I better ask. And so I asked her if she believed in the Trinity. She's like, oh no, there's no Trinity God in my life. So I said, I think this is this is the right woman for me. And so uh, I ended up uh, flying up to Canada to meet her. And we ended up uh, in November of 2015. And we got married uh, April of 2016. So we've been married for uh, six years and a few months. So and uh, I'm thankful for my two children and my wife now. And as we raise these children uh, to be God-fearing servants, uh, please pray for us here in Brazil as we uh, continue to work here, missionary work and sharing uh, the father and son truth and just, you know, sharing all the truths about, about Jesus and his wonderful love. So, so that's my testimony. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I can take questions now. Wow, thank you. What a story. That was very interesting. You know, you have shared some with me from before on, on uh, you know, a study center, but I had forgot all about it. So it all was fresh. So, uh, yeah, well, so um, uh, are you just living on donations now or how are you surviving? Yeah, uh, we uh, have a uh, little, little, uh, uh, work here where my wife's teaching English, uh, where we uh, sell some uh, bonbons, some healthy little uh, treats uh, to uh, you know make some money. But uh, we have uh, support from uh, a church in uh, Chino Valley where my wife and I got married, who I also uh, shared the father and son truth with as well in Chino Valley. Uh, and I've known them since 2009 uh, in uh, Abraham and uh, his wife, Lucy. And so, yeah, so we, they're supporting us here, helping to support us as well uh, in the, in the gospel work. So that's kind of our, uh, that's how we're supported. Mm -hmm. Amen. So did your father ever say that now you're not selfish anymore or? Uh, no, <laughs> but I know God was working through him. If he would just realize it, that God is real in his life, uh, you know, just be a miracle. So I'll pray for Michael. My dad's name is Michael. So uh, my, yeah, my mom's Mady, my brother's Matthew. So, so um, um, brother, when you meet the Jewish people, is, it, is, this, is that a way in to testify for them in the, you know, since you have some kind of Jewish background? Yeah, uh, you know, I haven't had many opportunities, believe it or not, to reach Jewish now that Jewish people. Now that I'm here in Brazil, I definitely don't have any real opportunities, but I hope soon. Uh, I hope uh, we, we might be moving from Brazil, try uh, another place to immerse our children in a different language, uh, immerse our children in, uh, in a different culture, and then hopefully maybe have some more opportunities to, uh, to learn to learn uh to meet some uh some more jewish people but pray for, uh, i'm trying to reach my uh my cousin mark he's jewish uh but i I'm, <clears throat> i think he might be christian now i'm i'm having a hard time uh, uh kind of getting an idea from him just from posts and stuff but i need to reach out to him and see where he's at spiritually but uh yeah uh, uh I hope to have more opportunities to reach out to the Jewish people. Right, right. So uh, when you became a vegetarian, did you feel a big change in your own, uh, you know, life? You know, did you feel much better when you had this huge change? Yeah, yes, actually I did. I, feel, I felt lighter. I felt, uh, you know, my mental clarity uh, started uh, coming in, you know, start, new desires starting to be formed to uh to make you know to, and then i think as my mind was changing i think that's how the lord really uh, uh really started speaking to me it was clear right right yeah i had that experience too i actually had changed my lifestyle when i met adventists so i think my mind was just open to re receive the truth so praise the lord i think so many people are getting into the truth through the health message 
Yeah. So well, before, we know that it'll be it'll be the final work of uh, of God's people. It'll be the only work that we can do is is the uh, medical missionary work. Uh, we see the avenues being cut off, and uh, as we go into a global economic collapse, we're going to see uh, uh, a new strange order of things, which is going to uh, change. And maybe maybe next time I'm on, I can uh, share with you. Uh, uh, some of uh, some of uh, things that I've been studying and finding out about the this uh, aspect. Absolutely, the, yes. Uh, very important, very important subject. Very important yeah. subject. So before I let you, uh, Jane, John, ask a question. When you were working at the Gerson uh, Hospital, or what you call it, you know, with the hosp uh, Gerson therapy, uh, you know, we hear that they have very very good results with their program. Is that true? Or is it uh, half true? Uh, I would say it's uh, half true. It's not not true at all. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was there for uh, for several months, and although I can't blame Gerson therapy totally, but uh, there was not one success case. Uh, you know, from from what I saw, from because the people leave their home, and then uh, maybe a couple weeks later, you hear that they died, or uh, you know that things weren't working out, or I didn't hear any, like, personally, I didn't hear any, uh, like, healing stories from, from the Gerson work while I was working there, unfortunately. Hmm. So do you think people were too sick when they came there, or? Could be, yeah. There, I, like I said, I'm not blaming Gerson therapy totally, but I think people use uh, natural remedies as a last resort. And usually that by that time it's too late, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and same, I had more success stories working for the Seventh Day Adventist uh, Natural Remedies place in uh, in Georgia at Times of Refreshing than I did at uh, at uh, Gerson. And that could be the spirit also, you know, the spirit that's working uh, uh, with Gerson and that lady particularly that could prevent be preventing things as well. Right. Yeah, Brother John. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Long, for that uh, testimony. I just have one question. Uh, do they burn a lot of plastic around uh, where you are in Brazil? Do they People? burn a lot of plastic? They do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm sure they do, especially in the country areas. I'm not sure the recycling program uh, in uh, where everything goes, but there's no recycling uh, here uh in uh the country areas we put all of our garbage in uh the bags and we bring it down and the garbage truck picks it up in uh on sabbath uh actually uh so uh there could be uh lots of lots of uh plastic not being recycled yes i don't know if they burn it or if they bury it or what they do with it but yeah you don't you don't see actually burning plastic around in the neighborhood no 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 Okay. Only in the country areas, they might burn a fire once in a while. I'm not sure if it's uh, plastic or not, but I mean, even even when we had our first house, we we burned plastic, didn't we? We burned some plastic, or not a lot, but uh, uh, we had a burn pile that we that we used. Yeah. No, because I was, I was just concerned about your coughing there, but that may. Oh yeah, no, no, no. This is something else, probably mold related or something. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, good health anyway. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Brother Young. Yeah, Marilyn. Hi. Um, your your testimony is really good. It's really interesting. And in some ways it's similar to mine. Oh, the way Lord. that yeah, the way that well, I did I wasn't like heavy into drugs and everything, but just the change and finding Christ and thinking that I found Jesus. But later on, I met a lady who said, you didn't find him. He found you. And I just, of course, he found me. But um, it's always a, a delight to hear a testimony. And I totally agree that the final message is going to involve the medical missionary, the right arm of the gospel, where we, we show people that God cares about their wellness, about their whole being. And then their brain gets clear and they can hear God speaking to them. So, yeah, I really like what you shared. It's wonderful. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
So it's did, my you ever, did you ever uh, talk with that therapist again, which uh, was uh, sharing with you about Christ? Yeah, you know, uh, Doug, he uh, he was going through his own cycle of depression, I think, and things like that. And he uh, he uh, he wasn't open. I tried sharing with him about the Sabbath and things like that. And uh, he, he wasn't open. And my friend Leroy, uh, my friend Leroy, who shared with me about the Sabbath, I shared with him about the father and son message. And he wasn't interested in that either. So it's kind of sad how that works. But, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we fight against principalities and powers and people are being moved, even, even friends and even people who are Christians, they're just close friends are being moved to reject, uh, reject these things. And it's very sad because they've helped you and they have brought you, but around, but you know, when you bring truth and it's rejected, it's kind of, yeah, it makes a little hole in your heart and only God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Right. Uh, and we need to remember that because, uh, you know, Christ came to save all and he doesn't want anyone to be lost, but unfortunately people, uh, don't choose yeah. truth so but what a blessing it is to be a therapist you know to have that they have a person there on the bench and you can testify yeah. just like you know you are one example of the blessing of having that kind of job so yes. uh, yeah 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 i just want to yeah we just want to share a little encouragement because from your trip to uh, to norway uh, after I believed on the Father and the Son, then I had some also talks and discussions with a close friend with Hassel. And he was a former uh, ardent uh, defender of the Trinity. But uh, he, if he, he saw the light, you know, all of a sudden. So God moved his heart also. And now he's, he's also very, uh, very much in, in many groups and, and you know, in very missionary spirits, you know, in a good way of talking to people about the Father and the Son. So, you know, you never know what your testimony works mm -hmm. amen well uh brother uh, morgan you were addicted to sports and uh, music and uh, you know lots of things and now you're addicted to christ and that's yeah. praise the lord that's a good an addiction and i hope that you will always like all of us you know i like that when you said oh i found christ even if you know like marilyn was saying is actually he find, finding us but that excitement which we all probably experience, we really can see that, wow, it's a meaning with life, you know, and Christ loves us. So it is, uh, and I can see in my own voice, I need to get that, you know, burden for people's souls back, this uh, deep love, which I really, I mean, I have love for people still, but that first excitement has to come back again. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much again, uh, Brother Morgan. Yeah, I really would like you to do some more programs with us. That would be great. Yeah, be an honor. Uh, you know, we we can't be the lukewarm, right? We we can't. We also can't be like the Ephesian, the F, the Church of Ephesus, where we lose our first love, and we all kind of find ourselves at times losing that first love, and that first love is is Christ. But the first love is to win souls, right? And when we love Christ, we love to win souls and uh you know we all need to do whatever it takes to to win these souls and and uh so we need to have a a revival of uh of soul winning you know to say the least amen marilyn since you uh, are uh, unmuted maybe you would like to have the closing prayer too okay Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I was talking to a friend of mine last night about that ladder early and ladder rain and how much we um, we need that. And uh, we talk about not wanting to lose our first love. And I know that when we share our testimony, it's the best thing because it really does remind us that Whatever state we were in, God saw and he kept leading and he kept showing. And as we opened our eyes and our hearts to the word, we became more um, imbued with his spirit and more able to want 
to love him. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, I'll have prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, we know that of ourselves we're imperfect and we're, we're actually very broken, sinful human beings that have no claim except that you have called us. And that calling, you have promised that you would begin and finish a good work in us. And I pray that the early and the latter rain would both be a part of our experience, that our hearts would be open and that we would receive the refreshing of your beautiful love and your beautiful presence. For without that, all the knowledge we have is not important. But with your love and your grace, we can be winners and we can win souls. I pray for each one that heard the testimony that Morgan gave, and I thank you for his beautiful family. I want to give a special prayer for his mom and dad. He has such a clear love for them. You can hear it in his voice. We just ask that uh, he would not give up persevering in prayer for them, and we, and we also pray for them. We thank you for this morning or this time with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Marilyn. Yeah. Amen. Thank so, you, Sister Marilyn. Yeah, that was really nice, Brother Morgan, to get to know you a little bit better and uh, hear how God has been leading in your <clears throat> leading in your life.